Good evening. Thanks to God. I'm so happy to have another opportunity to come and share some information, instruction, and hopefully inspiration with you on tonight to all of our Cell Church members and Cell Church leaders who are gathering in your small groups around the world for teaching, prayer, breaking bread, and fellowship. I want to talk a little bit tonight from my book, Making Disciples and Not Christians, How to Build an Acts to Community. And this particular book was inspired by the book of Acts, specifically Acts chapter 2 where we see the life of the church coming to fruition. We see the life of what Jesus spoke in Matthew 16 and 18, that upon this rock I will build my church. I will build a body of believers who are anointed and empowered for changed lives and to change lives. And so this is who we are destined to be because of our relationship with Jesus Christ because we have been born again of his spirit and therefore that makes us this absolutely powerful body of believers that are sent forth into the earth and so as we talk about this lesson tonight we need to understand what does it mean to make disciples if we see in Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 to 20 Jesus one of his final words to his disciples before he ascended into heaven was to go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations teaching them baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost teaching them to do all things that I have deserved for you to do and so let's understand that tonight what does it mean to make disciples now in describing the purpose statement of the church many of us point to Christ's instruction in what I just alluded to which is Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 which is to make disciples of all nations but depending on who you ask you might find a wide variety of, of interpretations regarding what it actually means to make disciples does it mean simply sharing the gospel with people does it simply mean preaching to them does it mean inviting them to church or becoming a member of a local church body we we certainly need to understand what it means to make disciples in order for us to manifest the type of power and authority that Jesus Christ intended when he told his early disciples to wait in Jerusalem until they had received power and said and once you have received power you shall be my witnesses which is what gives us the ability to introduce the message of Christ to others and to shape them or to point them in the direction of being shaped as prayerfully we have been shaped by the power of the Holy Spirit so we understand that there's a variety of interpretations regarding what it actually means to make disciples and most churches today understand it as a command to evangelize the world to lead people to faith and repentance in every corner of the world and spread the gospel as far as possible and while this is true there is certainly an evangelistic aspect to Christ's command we need to understand that his instructions go beyond just spreading the gospel if we were to look at the verb that is translated as make disciples it is Matthew and it is a beautifully complex word it carries more meaning than simply accumulating converts the idea of this word Matthew it communicates the idea of a learning believer someone who is growing in his or her faith and his or her love for the Lord as well as his or her love for fellow believers and ultimately also for those of the world for God so loved the world he didn't just love the church he so loved the world for we were once part of that world we still are when Christ died he died for us while we were a part of the world so we know we can thank God for his love for the world and we should express continue to express his love for the world which love 
penetrated into our hearts and led us into this wonderful relationship with him. So when we think about making disciples, we think about how much it goes beyond just spreading a gospel message or proclaiming a gospel message. We, it, again, it, it communicates the idea of a learning believer. And in order for us to make disciples of others, if that's the meaning of the word, we must become a learning believer ourselves. Continually growing and growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as the Apostle Paul spoke it to one of the churches that he ministered to. So we must become someone who is growing in our faith and in our love for the Lord. So when we think about the words, Go ye therefore make disciples, we see that Jesus' words emphasize not just the moment of salvation, but the lifetime of sanctification that follows. He made the same point again in John chapter 8 verse 31 when he said, If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. You are truly a learning believer. You are truly someone who is growing in his or her faith and his or her love for the Lord. Jesus says in another text, if you love me, you will obey what my father has commanded you. So we know that if we're going to go forward and make disciples, as Jesus instructed us to in Matthew 28, he says, teaching them, baptizing them. We must first be taught. We must first be baptized ourselves. If we're going to lead them in the ways that he has shown us, we must be first following that way. Other words, you're going to make somebody what you are, what you have become. Hallelujah. Trusting the Holy Spirit to work in them as prayerfully he has worked in you to transform you by the renewing of your mind. So that same transformation should uh, be something that we share. Introduce them to that same precious gift of the Holy Spirit that they can receive just as the early disciples did on the day of Pentecost. Just like you and I, prayerfully we've received that power of the Holy Spirit that caused the transformation, the metamorphosis to take place in us, changing us to a new creation. Hallelujah. And so this is the lifetime of sanctification that follows the initial moment of saying, oh, I accept Jesus, or oh, Lord, come into my heart. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and God raised him from the dead. And then the scripture says, and you shall be saved. And so beyond that step, there's this lifetime of sanctification that discipleship involves. So if you look at, again, John chapter 8, verse 31, he says, if you continue. So it's not enough to start with me, but you must continue, he says. Continue in my word, and then, and only then, will you be considered a true disciple of mine. So we see there's a difference between a one-time profession of faith and a lifetime of spiritual growth and increasing godliness. There's a difference between counterfeit and genuine conversion. So we must understand that if the mission of the church, the body of believers, those who have been transformed, renewed, those who have been changed, those who have become learning believers, those who are continuing on this path of a lifetime of sanctification, if the mission of the church, that body of believers, is to make growing, learning believers of all nations, then the question persists is, why do so many congregations limit their efforts to simply filling seats once they are weak? And often by meeting felt needs with worldly gimmicks. If, if we fully understand the mission that Christ has given it to us, and if we have fully been impacted with that message ourselves, then again, the question begs to be asked is, why do so many congregations limit their efforts to simply filling seats on a particular day or a couple of particular days a week at a particular place if we are to make disciples of all nations? Now, if we look at that strategy or the way that it's done seemingly in more places than not, the strategy that I just talked about may attract non-believers or casual believers or those who have not committed to this lifetime of learning for you. You can't get a lifetime of learning meeting for a couple hours a week and 
not really doing life together. So if it may attract these types of believers, the question I have for you is how does that promote the spiritual growth of believers that are already in the midst? If they're continually trying to seek new believers or reach out to new people just to attend church services, what type of effort is being put into developing the spiritual growth of those that they have already brought into that system so we need to know how we can stress the vital importance of sanctification while at the same time avoiding the tendencies to chase the trends and interests of a spiritually bankrupt world remember Christ has given us the power to be transformed and the same power that transformed us should cause us to speak a message of transformation to others. We should not be transformed as the world. The world should become transformed unto Christ. So if we, if we do all the things that people want us to do that makes them comfortable where they are, then they'll never see a need or feel the desire to be transformed into something else. So it's very important that we understand the difference between our outreach and what the mission that Christ has given us. Unfortunately, there are too many popular preachers in churches today. Some of them claim that they're not interested in reaching other Christians or other believers, that their sermons are strictly intended for the unsaved seekers. If that was true, then why would Jesus give us this instruction to make disciples of all nations? It can't just be about reaching new and different people time to time. You, you must have a program for those that you've already reached to start them on this step of discipleship, of becoming a learning believer, continuing to grow in sanctification. And so it's very important that believers mature. I think about one of the texts that the Apostle Paul mentioned to the church in Corinth that he says, by this time you ought to be teachers when you still have need for someone to teach you the elementary principles of, of the things of God over again. And that's what happens if we don't introduce people to a pathway of sanctification, to a pathway of discipleship. This is what Jesus intended when he says and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the believers those who are continuing to learn those who are sanctified by my spirit the gates of hell shall not prevail against you and we want you to be able to know that you are a mighty stumbling block to the to the to the enemy's efforts to derail God's plan in the earth but you have to be developed to that place and this is the responsibility of those who understand this message, which is the whole reason for the writing of this book, how to build an Acts 2 community by making disciples, not Christians. And the reason why that distinction is drawn between disciples and Christians is because anyone can say, I'm a Christian. But a disciple is a person, remember, who's a learning believer, who's following after the ways of Christ not someone who's just verbalizing my allegiance to Christ. Although the scripture says, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and then you shall be saved. But what Jesus said, if you continue, I really want to stress that particular portion of scripture again because I find this is a key. Again, that's John 8, 31. Definitely make note of that and read it and meditate upon it. If you continue in my word, not just if you receive my word or hear my word yes faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God then Jesus said you must continue in my word in that same chapter I believe he talked about if you abide in me and my word abide in you then you ask what you will and it shall be done for you how many of you today really want to become a disciple of Christ not just a hearer of Christ not just a Christian but you want to become a disciple if, if, if you have that desire, then you're walking in the perfect will and the actual intent of God. He wants you to become a learning believer, which is the whole reason for our Bible college program, starting with our associates 
which is a program designed to help disciple new believers to show them how to live that life of sanctification to give them the information the instruction on what the Bible instructs us in this in regards to these things so hopefully you definitely see the difference between just that one time confession of faith and what Jesus was intending about making disciples is a lifetime of spiritual growth and increasing godliness not being counterfeit but being genuine and so we must understand that our mission as the church as a body of believers is to first become growing learning believers and then go forward and help others to become growing and learning believers in all nations praise God so I want to really take time to go over some of this introduction for this book tonight it's available by ebook you can contact me those of you who are leaders in the cell churches that we are you know you you certainly should already have a copy of this book by now if not definitely contact me so I can get you a copy of this book for this is something that I I speak over each one of you I breathe into your lives so that those that you are breathing over during your preaching and teaching time and times of fellowship and just serving and loving on each other will be infected by it as well so we don't want to discourage believers who want to dig deeper into the scriptures we don't want believers just to stay on the surface we don't want believers just to stay in the baby stage at first we all have to develop a sincere get by the sincere milk of the word we must teach and preach the unadulterated word of God and help them to understand it so that they can grow thereby someone said me grow thereby we're not just feeding them just for the sake of saying they were fed but the but the point of feeding them is so that they may grow thereby and become mature so we must encourage believers to dig deeper into the scriptures many people have a hunger for more than just the basic elements of hearing the gospel or attending church services they're already getting that but we need to be those activated empowered believers that push us past the moment of salvation into this life of sanctification which is uh, what Jesus is describing when he tells us to go therefore and make disciples but before you can make disciples you must first become a disciple in fact saints we are far more likely to lead many women to shallow faith stunted growth and sadly false conversion if we have not made these steps ourselves remember a disciple is basically meaning someone becoming what you are or who you are so if we want to see people mature we must become more mature if we want to see people grow we must grow if we want to see people living a life of sanctification we must begin to be live that life of sanctification for our teaching is not simply what we say but it's also what we do and so we don't want people to be stunted in growth I don't want you saints of God to be stunted in growth which is why we take the time to put this book together by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit it's the reason why we share courses through our Bible college programs to help you to be able to to dig deeper into the scriptures as the Apostle Paul says to a young pastor named Timothy for Paul wanted him to grow and not to depend on his teaching but to depend on the leading and teaching of the Holy Spirit so he instructed him to, to search to, to study to show his self approved unto God hallelujah so that he would dig deeper into the truths of God so that God can speak directly to him and so that he can start growing as a maturing believer that he could start that life of sanctification that process of being transformed by the renewing of his mind so as we define by Christ's command to his disciples we know the purpose of the church is to make learning believers men and women children whose lives reflect a deep commitment to and love for the Lord of course if we love the Lord we obey his commandments you have this deep commitment and love for the Lord you have a deep commitment and love for his word and you have a deep commitment and love for his people so the question that I have for you during this brief time I share with you tonight is are you actively helping your 
congregation grow in this clear and critical purpose for the church? Are you as an individual growing in this clear and critical purpose for the church? Which is to reflect a deep commitment and love for the Lord, his word, and his people. That's really the question I want to leave with you as I use this time tonight. So we're speaking to you about how to make an Acts 2 community. Make disciples, not Christians. Tonight I've spoken to you about what does it mean to make disciples. Prayerfully, you examine some of the scripture texts that Jesus spoke about disciples and how those who have become disciples of Christ the messages they share with others to help them to grow into that same deep commitment of love for the Lord his word and his people and now this is the message that must continue through us remember we're simply being fruitful letting the, allowing the word to become fruitful in our lives allowing the word to multiply as we share it and show it to others and then teaching them to do the process to repeat that process over and over and over again praise God so Saints Spirit reach out to me uh, my email address is info info at agministries.net this is my main website Amazing Grace Ministries www.agministries.net and so we love this time we're thankful for this time that we've had to share with you tonight I look forward to hearing from you and growing with you. Hopefully next week I'll come back and I'll get into the first chapter of the book, which talks about New Testament life. But I thank you for allowing me this time to come into your homes. And again, I pray now in the name of Jesus that this teaching, the words of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, and the impartation of his wisdom will come upon our will, that we will yield ourselves first unto Christ as we will speak and breathe over others, that they will also yield themselves to the will of Christ, that we will continually be transformed and renewed by the transforming of our mind. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen.